بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك علما وتعليما إنك على كل شيء قدير So this is the fourth and last part of our uh, uh, course on uh, how to get married uh, in Islam and this is the section on rights so if you skipped forward to this recording and you are listening to this recording first because you're interested in your rights then you have not uh, fulfilled your amana, your uh, uh, the trust of being a listener because it's the fourth part and you have to listen very very carefully to the first part, second part and the third part before you listen to this section so please if you have skipped forward to this section please skip back, go back, listen to part one part two, part three, part four. If somebody forward you this, this video without the previous videos, then that is not doing the proper job. So please, this video should be understood in the context, and this is just the last and the least significant section, uh, and the least indicative, uh, or the least uh, uh, of what is an Islamic marriage than any other section. So please have a look at those. So we've looked at section one, which was motivation and spirit. So go back and listen to that if you haven't listened to it. The process of marriage, go back and listen to that if you haven't. Family dynamics, and now on to rights. And so as we mentioned in the process, is we said that before you get married, you have to agree on which madhab slash sheikh slash legal system you're going to follow. Obviously, any legal Islamic legal system. So you're going to say, for example, you got married in... Pakistan, you say we're going to follow the law of Pakistan or we're going to follow the Hanbali school or the Maliki school or we're going to follow Sheikh so and so why are you going to do that? because you're going to have debates there are things that are not crystal clear and so now when you get onto your rights you say well my rights, your rights well there's a difference of agreement among the ulama on the rights and so when you're not going to cooperate and you know everyone's trying to get their rights and it's getting nasty, then we need to know exactly which system, which sheikh, which madhab you're going to go back to. Because otherwise, how are you going to find out, how are you going to get to an, a final answer? Right? And so you need to state in the beginning of your contract, we are following the Maliki school. We are going to listen to sheikh so-and-so. If he's not alive, sheikh so-and-so. We are going to go follow this Islamic law system from this country or that country. Because otherwise... When, when, when there's a time of disagreement and there's no cooperation, it's going to become hell. And hell is not what we want to live in life. We want to live a paradisical life, a nice life the way it's like, the, where the dean makes it easy to solve problems. So, first of all, rights versus responsibility. So, the Prophet ﷺ said, as Nathan Bukhari Muslim, every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. Uh, you have things in your life that you're responsible for. Think about your responsibilities. Don't think about your rights. Rights come with responsibilities. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a responsibility and then gives you rights to enable you to fulfill the responsibility. So, the right, the responsibility on our shoulders, that is the primary thing. That is the thing you're worried about, that's the thing you're concerned with, not your rights. So when you're thinking, oh yes, I want to know my rights in Islam because I want to get my rights from somebody, you're thinking the wrong way to begin with. We should be thinking, how can I fulfill my responsibilities and what tools do I need to fulfill those responsibilities? And those tools, they're called your rights. The leader of, the, uh, of a people is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. A man is the guardian of his family and is responsible for them. A woman is the guardian of her husband's home and, and his children, and she is responsible for them. The servant of a man is a guardian of the property of his master, and he is responsible for it. No doubt, every one of you is a shepherd, and he is responsible for his flock. And so this is how we should view things, responsibility. Don't ask, what, the, what is this marriage doing for me? Like, I can't believe I got into this marriage. This is the biggest joke ever. Why did I even do it? Like, I don't see how this marriage is making me happy at all. This is ridiculous. Like, what do I get out of this? That's a wrong way of thinking. Wrong way of thinking. Just say, what can I give to this relationship? Not, not, what, I, not what I can take from this relationship. Right? What can I give to this relationship? Not what I can take from this relationship. 
and Timothy and others, uh, uh, they note that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, who, uh, whenever a man forgives another, Allah only makes him stronger. Okay, I'm not going to forgive her this time. This is ridiculous. She's treating me like a fool. I'm not going to forgive him this time. Who does he think he is? That's the wrong way of thinking. Is the believer takes from the relationship what they need for the relationship. You give to the relationship and you take from the relationship what you need to relate what you need. So she's saying to herself, listen, I cannot possibly do this whole mother business and her wife business, all of these things, if I have to make all the money. So he needs to make the money so that I can do my job. Not he needs to pay for me, but rather if I'm trying to give to this relationship, I need certain things. I need certain things in this relationship, otherwise I can't give. And so they get, they take only to give, not to take. And then they forgive. So, but, so it's not an issue of, I need to win. I need to show her. I need to show him. Right? That's not how the Muslim works. Rather, the more you forgive, the more stronger you become, the more mighty you become, the more powerful you become. Forgive and forget, you become stronger. And you take only to give so there's certain times you need to put your foot down and say this, I, this is undoable you can't do this it's not, it's, it's not possible this relationship cannot work if I don't get these certain things from it I just can't do it so I need these rights I have to, you have to give me these rights otherwise I cannot function now that makes total sense right? because you are taking to give not just taking for the sake of taking and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not forget to be lenient and magnanimous towards one another. Right? So why is it that I'm always giving and he's always taking? Why is it that I'm always giving and she's always taking? Everybody feels like that, by the way. Everybody feels like that. Everybody feels, if you ask anybody in a marriage, they'll say, yeah, I, you know, I do, I put in 150% and she puts in 50%. Or I put in 150% and he puts in 50%. It's like, and it's kind of strange. They both will say the same thing. Because that's how people feel. People feel that they're investing a lot and they're not getting that much. Right? And so you should say, no, that's how it should be. Because in order for the thing to work, both have to put in 150% and get out 50%. That's how it works. From their side, the way that they feel. They have to do that. And it's like, it's okay that you are not getting all of your rights and you're doing more than is obliged for you to do. That is totally fine. That is Islamic. You don't have to do that. But it's not going to work if you, if you, if you, and it's not going to work and that's not what Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And this verse is narrated in the context of marriage. It's not context of something else, context of marriage. When you're talking about your rights before and after marriage, don't forget to be lenient and magnanimous towards people. Don't forget that because it's not going to work. And the more you give, the more you're going to get. So there's a big difference, difference between your rights and your responsibilities. However, we need to know people's rights when people no longer play nice. Okay, we've listened to the first recording, second recording, third. I've heard every single ayah. I don't care. I just don't care anymore. I am, I'm dealing with a kettle that is boiling over. You're dealing with a dynamite. We're not dealing with people who are acting Islamically or anything. I, I, we are now on the bottom line. Okay, where is the bottom line? It's important to know that. So what are the man's rights? Right. What are the man's rights? In general, again, specifics we'll find in particular legal systems or particular madhahib or etc. Uh, we have the basic things. Number one, intimacy. So the right to intimacy, the right to sexual intercourse. This is a, one of the key rights of the man. Again, we've spoken about all of these things. If you listen to this recording out of context, please don't blame me. Listen to the previous recordings and you'll see everything is explained in context and everything, but this is we're just drawing the bottom line. The man's rights, right to intimacy. The rights for his wife to stay home if requested. That's a, that's a right of his. So this is, I don't want you to work outside the house. I don't want you to leave the house unless you have a need. And if you have a need, I'll organize it for you. This is one of the rights of a man. The rights to obedience. And again, we're going to find this in different madhahib. What exactly does it mean? Legal systems, etc. What does that mean? But the general thing is the rights to obedience. The man's asking you to do something as a wife. 
please do it. This is the rights of the man. And privacy. And this is something that the fuqaha, the scholars of fiqh, are not going to talk about. Because they're interested in court scenarios and all these things. But this is very, very important. Privacy. Right? And arguably, I should have put it at the top of the list. Is that you, sister, you met this guy. You met this man. And you said no to him. Or you married him. And you're no longer married to him. Or you are married to him. And you live with him. And his whole life is on show for the whole world. So his right is that at each stage in the marriage, every single thing that can be kept private is kept private. As much as possible. He, you met him and he said he had a physical problem. And you said no to him. And now you're telling the whole world, why did you say no to Ahmed? Oh, you know, this is a problem. It's like, Sister... It's private. Why did you Why did you do that? Okay, you're married. Okay, why is your ma- marriage rocky? Oh, you know, this is the problem that he has. He does certain sins. He there's he, there's things about his past that I found out about. Don't share that with the world. Privacy is very important. Privacy is very important. Right? You're not married anymore. Okay, now I can destroy this guy. Totally destroy him. It's not. It's not Islam. Right, privacy is number one. Most important thing, privacy. Right, keep things private. Particularly when it deals with you know, intimate things, keep it private. Very, very important. The woman's rights. Right. The woman's rights, number one, is food, clothing and housing. She's to be supported, financial support. Now, she can say, hey, I don't want food, clothing and support, housing. Uh, we'll agree on that I live by myself, for example, or I live with my parents. Or I live in another country and you're going to give me a monthly allowance or a yearly allowance. That's fine. But the basic idea is she has the right to be fed, clothed and housed and have normal amenities. Uh, what's normal, given her background, his background, his financial situation, etc. That what's normal. Okay, I need electricity. Uh, I need water. I need an oven. I need whatever's normal in our setting, right? And so she has these things. We're not talking about poverty level. We're talking about what's normal for her life. She's from New York, New York lifestyle. She's from Brunei. She's from uh, uh, Lisbon in Spain. She's from Portugal. She's in Senegal. Whatever is normal for her in her background, right? Given his financial situation and her background, what's normal, right? These are these basic things. She is not supposed to have to worry about Food, clothing, housing, and normal things like that. How am I going to pay the electricity bill? She's not supposed to be worrying, worrying about that at all. That is not her concern. So these basic things are supposed to be there from the husband. Financial independence. Financial independence. Meaning her money is hers. Her money is hers. So what's the first money she's going to get, for example? Well, maybe she's, uh, uh, she's a millionaire. That has nothing to do with her husband. Nothing to do with her husband. She's a millionaire. She owns five houses and he's renting. That has nothing to do with her husband. She wants to spend all her money on charity or none of her money on charity. She wants to buy a house. She doesn't want to buy a house. He has no control over her her money because she is financially independent. It's very important. He cannot say, hey, listen. I'm going through financial difficulties, so listen, you need to like help me out, or you need to start working, right? That is not a right. That is, A right that she has is, I married you, and you're responsible for my food, clothing, housing, and that my money is mine, and you cannot touch it, and you cannot inf- interfere, and you don't have a right to know how much money I make, or how much money I spent, or anything, right? And you cannot use the sword of awkwardness, What's that? What's the sort of awkwardness? Saif al Hayat is, oh, you know, I'm hardly getting by, and mashallah, you know, you've got lots of money, and you know, I have to work 80 hours, and I'm so tired. If you just help me out a bit, no, 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 you can't do that. So, for her side, the best person for her to give her charity towards is her husband. In fact, certain scholars, they'll say that she can even give her zakah to her husband. So she's a millionaire and her husband is barely getting by so she can give her zakat to her husband, right? And so giving 
your sadaqah, definitely giving your sadaqah to your husband is number one. That's from your side, sister, from you. But from your side, brother, you cannot say, hey, you need to help me out, you know, you need to do this, or can you loan me the money? You can't do that. It has to be very clear that she wanted to do it, and there was no pressure. So you have to be very, very careful about that. Very, very careful. Financial independence. Right, financial independence. Her money is hers. He doesn't need to know how much she has, what she does with it, where it came from, what she's spending on, anything. Very, very important. If they want to merge their accounts, that's fine. But at any time in the middle of the marriage, she's like, you know what? Uh, this is not, I don't like this. I don't like this anymore. We are now splitting. My uh, We have different accounts, different everything. Um, that's, that's her right. right. That's her right. And then again, privacy, super important, unbelievably important. We mentioned the context of the man, same thing. So brother, you met this girl and you said no to her and you tell everybody why you said no to her. Why do you say no to her? I say, you know, I found this about her. So why on earth did you share that with the world? She said that to you in confidence when you met her and now you're saying no to her, you're not marrying her and you're sharing that with the world, subhanAllah, right? Or you're married to her, okay, why did you divorce her? Oh, you know, I found out something about her past. Subhanallah. Right? So what's going to happen on your Qiyamah? You embarrassed her, she, you will be embarrassed in front of the whole of creation. Stand in front of the whole of creation. Here we go. He did this and this and this and this. How do you, how do you like it now? So that's a right that you have. Privacy. I've never told anybody else this, and you were the closest person to me, and you've spent the longest time with anybody else in life, and you come and share these private things with the whole world. You cannot do this, brother. Okay? And so the right of the woman is privacy. When it comes to intimacy, when it comes to uh, whatever it is in her life, her family, anything that's private, you cannot share. And if you're not sure, don't share it. Can't do that. You're divorced now. Destroy her. Nuke her. Right? Put up, Create a, a, a website. Why I hate my ex. And what was wrong with her. Right? It should not be like that. Brother, you should be the person who is helping her get married. Not destroying her. Right? You should be the person. You should, you should be helping her out. And so this is this idea of privacy. There's the Ukhuwa, number one. She's your brother and sister in it. These are brothers and sisters in Islam, number one. And number two, privacy is so important. Nobody else got as close to this you know, female as you did. She is more vulnerable to you than anybody else. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you in your Muqiyama, did you respect that, vul that vulnerability? Right? Particularly when it comes to women. Particularly when it comes to women. So privacy is unbelievably important. So sharing things about her with your family, sharing things about other people, by default you don't share anything with, uh, that is private uh, unless you need to go to a scholar and the best thing is to ask her, listen, sister, you know, I need to talk to him about this situation. Can I talk to him or not? And then you, you ask the sheikh, listen, am I allowed to say these kind of things about my wife to you? And he says, yes, you can because I need to know this or this, right? But the default is zero. Right, the default is private. This is sacred, right? A person, a human being, a Muslim is more sacred than the Kaaba. It's more sacred than the Kaaba. And so you are. It's almost like the Prophet Sallallahu is giving you this wife, and this is my daughter. This is one of my followers. This is my daughter. Please look after her. And you, what did you do? Destroyed her by sharing all this private information about her, and she trusted you. So this is, this is a big issue, very, very important, privacy. Somebody who doesn't understand that, they have no sense of hurma, what is sacred, right? And so how are they, how is, how are they going to meet Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, one issue that is debated is the issue of medical bills. So we mentioned, again, why you have to go to a legal system. So if you go to a Muslim country, for example, you live in Lebanon, they will stipulate in their legal code whether or not a man is responsible to pay for the medical bills of his wife. And now you're in this country, you have to stick to that country of that Islamic system. 
you agreed, for example, on the Hanafi school. So you're going to go to the Hanafi Mufti and say, Sheikh, do I have to pay for my wife's medical bills, yes or no? He's going to say yes or no, depending on the Hanafi school, right? And so it's very important to do that because otherwise she's like, oh my God, number one, this guy is like, how is he? My husband is not even like looking after me, number one. Number two, this is my right. And so now you haven't fulfilled my rights. So therefore, what does that mean? Does that mean we're still married? Does that mean, how does it work? And you're thinking, mashallah, I'm the best husband since sliced bread because I give her all her rights and more, but I don't pay for her medical bills because I'm not obliged to. Right? And so rights are important and things are clear. Right? This is the situation. Okay? And that may be even be relevant right at the beginning. So this brother, you're marrying the sister who is chronic, who's very ill. And she says, listen, I, will, I'm, I can agree to marry you, but honestly, I can't afford, like, you already have this situation and it's like, you know, your, your medical insurance is crazy or, your, or the bills are crazy. I, I can't do that. Can we agree that, for example, we're going to follow this system that says I'm not obliged to do that, right? Because otherwise it's not going to work, right? So obviously that's not ideal, but clarity, right? We need to make sure things are clear. And so again, stick to a system so that you know these things are there. And so when you render rights to somebody else, you're giving somebody their rights, they have to be done willingly and without a fight. So you have not given somebody their rights if they have to pull it out of you. Right? So every single time I ask this guy to get money to go to shopping, it's like, oh my God, how much do you want this time? Yeah? Mm-hmm. And I bet you're going to buy the most expensive toothpaste, right? Make sure you buy the cheapest one. It's like, okay, subhanAllah. Brother, next time I'm not going to ask you. I'm just going to ask somebody else. In fact, I'm just going to make my own money. If I have to pull your teeth, to put, it's like getting money out of you is like pulling teeth. I'm not going to ask you next time. It's not going to do it. Right? Um, I would like you to stay home this weekend. I don't want you to go to your parents. No. Oh my God. Oppression. I'm being oppressed. I'm being oppressed. Watch me. It's like, okay, forget it, sister. You know what? Just go. Right? So, uh, this uh, you have, you're asking for it. Someone's asking for a right. They have to, you, you have to give it to them willingly and without a fight. If you don't give it, if it's clear, like, oh, it's a it's a it's a fight every single time this 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 request is made, then you are not giving them the rights, right? And this is particularly relevant with intimacy. We spoke about those things, right? And so if the the woman is like, well, if you have to, really, I guess again, right? It's something like that. It's like when it comes to intimacy, it's like, well, if it's a fight every single time, or it's like really off-putting, then you haven't given those rights. Because you've you've put this barrier where this person cannot really get that right without making it super awkward, right? Um, you know, uh, this wife's you know, been staying with, with her, her family for the first two years of marriage. She's like, you know, can we can we move into our own apartment? Oh my God, why why do you always bring this up? You're living in with the parents and it's fine. And I'm at college. Da, 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 da. No no no. She has a right to lodging, and she has a right to ask. It's one thing to say I can't do it. The other thing is to, is to make it turn it into a fight every single two minutes. So when you look at the rights, these are my rights that I owe you, right? As my spouse, I have to look at these things, fear Allah, and give you these rights, give this person these rights, without willingly. Okay, I'm very happy to do this. I'm the one who initiates it. So yeah, I fear Allah. I need to do this, and and when I'm asked for them, I don't put up a fight. I don't make it awkward. No, it's, it's not that it only comes out of me because it's a, because it was squeezed out of me. That if you that if, if that if that's how it's done, it was simply not given. It's simply not given, right? So the right rendering rights only count when it's done willingly and without a fight. And then there's a sort of awkwardness, right? So well, I didn't I didn't say no to her. Right? She asked for some money. She needs to buy clothes. I'm like, ah, oh, really? I just made it really awkward. So I said, okay then. Spend only as much as you need. Only that much. And show me the receipt actually because I don't trust you. It's like, subhanAllah, I'm, I'm not going to ask you again if it's like that. Show me the receipt because I don't trust you. SubhanAllah. Right. As opposed to, oh, okay. Yeah, actually, um, I'm really broke this month. So can is it possible to wait for next month? Because I really can't afford to buy this thing right now. Okay, uh, okay, sure, Let, you need it. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll borrow that money, that's okay. Without, it's like, oh my God, I have to borrow the money now. 
oh my god, you're going to ask me to work another extra hours, uh, extra 10 hours this weekend because I need to buy this thing. So the sort of awkwardness, it has to be given that with ease, that the person feels that they can ask for these rights that they have without it being a fight. Without there being a fight. Right? Um, so this is a very, very important. But again, what does that mean then? Is that brother, sister, you have these rights. If you anticipate a fight, or you know this is a very difficult for this person to give you these rights, please consider if you really need those rights. Right? I have a right for you to stay home. Okay, brother, do you really need her to stay home? No. So why are you even exercising that right then? Because I can. Because I'm the man, right? You're not a man, you're a fool. Right? It's like, she needs, she needs, she wants to go and see her parents. Can I go and see her parents? She wants to go and see her brother. She wants to go and hang out with her friends in a decent setting. It's all fine. Like, go ahead, right? Don't be annoying. Because you're going to make this person hate the relationship. Right? This person is, you know, whatever it is. This guy is really stressed. His dad died two months ago. He's, his job is shaky. Uh, something came up and it's like, and she, now she's like, hey, I need this money, I need this money, and this money. Yes, you have a right to ask for these things, but what, why do you make it easier for him to say, you know what, this guy's really stressed. Right, let's just give him some space. This is Ihsan. Again, this recording is about your rights. You want to get your rights, then that's what you have to do. And he cannot make a fuss. He can't say, oh my God, don't you realize that my dad passed away two months ago? Don't you realize that my, my, my job's on the rocks? Don't you know that I've got, I'm in debt? Now you're asking me for this thing, right? You have a right to ask for it. It doesn't matter what his situation is, but be considerate, right? But for the person rendering those rights and giving those rights willingly and without a fight, very important. And without the sort of awkwardness and this or that, whatever it is. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the Bible, Ya'la and others, that the wealth of a man, his financial rights, cannot be taken unless he gives it willingly. So the person, now this person said, yeah, you know, uh, my wife never wants me to pay. She she never minds paying, right? My wife always pays for her own stuff, and she doesn't mind paying. Like she has, mashallah, she makes a lot of money, and I make an okay money. And she pays for everything anyway. Okay, does she do so willingly, or is it just like how things have turned out, and she's just kind of like whatever, right? Oh, my husband's like never really in the mood for intimacy, so like that's why you know, that's why like we really don't do things like that, like unless we really have to. It's like, is, is he, is, is that because he wants to? Or is it now like you have this new status quo where it's just so awkward that it just doesn't happen? So is he, is he doing this like, right? He's, he really is like happy to relinquish those rights. Or is it just, it's become a really weird situation, right? And this is very, very important. Very, very important because as you mentioned, there's no future for the, for society, for Muslim society without the existence of a proper marriage. So people should like, yes, in my marriage, I feel that, yes, I don't always get my rights, but that's because I'm, I, I happily and graciously relinquish those rights, as opposed to, yeah, I try and get my rights out of the marriage, but it's kind of like 50% and I just feel horrible and uh, I don't like it, but that's just how it is. That's how she is. That's how he is. What can I do with it? right that's not that's not good right so we cannot expect to have one your rights fulfilled all the time but it should be done in a way that say hey sister this is the reality i'm trying to get my phd i can only work this few many hours i don't have the money please let's just try and make it work and she's like yes i'm okay i am happy with that right or uh, i'm trying to do my masters and that means i'm studying that means i really can't do much for the kids uh, that means I'm very tired at night. I don't have time for this. I'm, I'm you know, this is the situation. Um, can you accept that from me? Like, I can't give you your rights. Like, yeah, cool. That's okay. That's how it should be. So this, again, going back to um, the previous recording about the communication. How do you know that that person is happily, oh, you know, overlooking their rights if you don't communicate properly? So very, very important. We're talking about halal and haram. We're talking about hellfire and paradise. Not small not small things. Right? Many people, they live the life saying, I don't steal, I don't cheat, I don't kill anybody. I pray, I fast. I'm a good person. Brother, you're not a good person until you get married 
and you and you you can you ask yourselves these very awkward questions sister you wear hijab you teach quran in sunday school everybody calls you whatever it is everybody comes to ask you for dua everyone says mashallah you have wonderful killed children until you ask yourself these questions am i fulfilling the rights that allah has put on me to the people around me and if i'm not why why aren't i the first person asking that question so religious being religious outside the house is easy being religious inside the house is very is not easy this is one of the miracles of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam married to so many women and nobody ever complained oh this guy's horrible this guy's this this guy no he's a genuine beautiful person who fears allah and shows ihsan and excellence in all angles of his life so we have rendering rights uh, uh, willingly and without a fight and without the sort of awkwardness. Now again, going back to this paradigm or the conflict, you want an Islamic marriage or just want to make it halal? So yeah, I'm just making it halal. We're not even thinking about Islamic marriage. I'm not religious to begin with. We're not even thinking about society or anything. Okay, fine. Then don't think about your rights, right? So it's like, yeah, I don't have like a right to intimacy. That's a bit weird, right? Or I have a right to like money. Like it's a bit weird. I just basically have a halal girlfriend or halal boyfriend. Okay. It's halal. Alhamdulillah. You listen to the recordings. You wanted to get out of the haram. You got to marry. You got, uh, or, you, or you were just not interested. You say, yeah, I just want to find a halal boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend right now. I don't have a girlfriend right now. But I'm not interested in this whole thing called marriage. This whole institution of marriage. I'm just interested in avoiding the haram. And just having a relationship with the opposite sex in some kind of halal way. Okay. Then don't think about rights and responsibility. That's great, but you're not. You know, it's not an Islamic marriage, right? And this whole recording is not relevant to you. And then rights versus dealing with modern realities, right? There is an agenda to destroy families, right? It's an agenda, and part and parcel of that is uh, the the way that modern life dictates a dual income family. So. If you go across the world today and do a survey of how many men can make enough money to support a family, a wife and children in their setting, like it's very few. And that's not just in developing countries or third world countries. In modern, it's in developed countries. So you go to England, go to America, go to Australia and say, oh yeah, this is a guy, here's a man, he lives in Melbourne in Australia and he works nine to five and he makes enough money to pay for his, his himself, his wife and his kids. Like, you're going to find lots of people not like that. In fact, arguably, most people not like that. Because it's built for a dual income society. I'm working, she's working, and that's how we make ends meet. So now we're entering this relationship. I'm entering this relationship with the assumption that I am not even going to give her her basic rights. And she's entering this relationship on that basis. And I'm entering this thing that, hey, I'm not going to really ask her for all her my rights over her because she is not getting her rights. So like, okay. So is, is, is that halal? Is that okay? Yes. However, at any point in the relationship, it could flip. Meaning, she's fed up. She's fed up. I'm working, you're working. And I don't want to do this anymore. You know what? I have a right to be supported and I want that. You can, so at any point, so what I'm trying to say is at any point when you're relinquishing, when, when you are overlooking your rights, at any point you say, you know what? I want them, I want them back now. I want them. I, I don't want to work anymore. Forget this. I cannot be a mother and a wife and work. I can't do it. So I don't know how you're going to do it. You work it out. Right? So the initial question, is that okay for these people to start the relationship or work into that relationship, the modern realities of finance. Yeah. And therefore not really demand rights. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Demanding rights is not, are not an integral of the marriage. Right. It's not. But again, at any point that person can say, you know what? Game over. I am making money. You are making money as a female. I have a right to be provided for. I do not want to pay for anything in the house. Nothing anymore. Not paying for the kids. Not paying for myself. Not paying anything else. Not responsible for these things. Don't want to do it. 
So now you're in the situation, right? Where you might have to start working 80 hours a week. This is just the reality of it. And she with the reality that you hang on a minute, maybe you won't be able to get the live in the same kind of place that you used to live in. Maybe you have to sell the house. Maybe you're going to have to move into a small apartment. Maybe you're going to have to move country, right? Uh, but these are important discussions because this is something that's happening throughout uh, throughout the world, right? Throughout the world because of the the the, the uh, part of the uh, ulama, part of the globalization, part of um, uh, just the you know uh, the attack that family and 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 structured society is uh, antagonistic to many agendas that exist today, and so it's being attacked. Right, it's being attacked. So this idea of like there's a breadwinner, right? There's one a man, and he supports things, and this is the father role, and this is the mother role, and this is the kids. This is all being attacked, and so we have to, you know, on a larger scale, work against it. On a on a on a individual level, this just this is important. It's like, hey, I'm gonna get married tomorrow, and I already know that my wife, my husband, is expecting me to work, and I'm getting married. I'm expecting my wife to work. That's just kind of understood because this is how it is. This is where we live. We live in California. This is how rent is. Like, if you're asking me to pay rent, I can't even, I can just about pay rent. Just about pay rent. Let alone bills, let alone anything else. So obviously I'm expecting her to work. Okay, we'll explain that in the beginning. Agree on it. Okay, work. And But remember, at any time in the relationship, she can change the mind. And sister, at any time in the relationship, you're like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I do not want to, I'm not happy. This is, I'm not no I'm no longer putting money into the relationship willingly. I'm now doing it in spite of myself, and I don't want to do that anymore. I refuse. You have a right to do that. So then we go back to square one. Say, so, well, now we have these rights and these responsibilities. So these are considerations to think about. We have to be realistic. So in these recordings, we have looked at the motivation and spirit of marriage. We looked at the process. We looked at family dynamics and we looked at rights. And again, if you're listening to this recording or skipping through this recording and you forgot the whole beginning, please, it's not my fault. I explained everything in detail, the spirit behind things, nuances and all these things in the first three recordings. And this is just a kind of summary uh, of, again, when people no longer play nice.